The de Broglie Bohm theory, also known as the pilot wave theory, Bohmian mechanics, Bohm's interpretation, and the causal interpretation, is an interpretation of quantum mechanics. In addition to a wave function on the space of all possible configurations, it also postulates an actual configuration that exists even when unobserved. The evolution over time of the configuration, that is the positions of all particles or the configuration of all fields, is defined by the wave function by a guiding equation. The evolution of the wave function over time is given by the Schrodinger equation. The theory is named after Louis de Broglie (1892–1987) and David Bohm (1917–1992). The theory is deterministic and explicitly nonlocal. The velocity of any one particle depends on the value of the guiding equation, which depends on the configuration of the system given by its wave function. The latter depends on the boundary conditions of the system, which, in principle, may be the entire universe. The theory results in a measurement formalism, analogous to thermodynamics for classical mechanics, that yields the standard quantum formalism generally associated with the Copenhagen interpretation. The theory's explicit non-locality resolves the measurement problem, which is conventionally delegated to the topic of interpretations of quantum mechanics in the Copenhagen interpretation. The Born rule in Broglie-Bohm theory is not a basic law. Rather, in this theory, the link between the probability density and the wave function has the status of a hypothesis, called the quantum equilibrium hypothesis, which is additional to the basic principles governing the wave function. The theory was historically developed in the 1920s by de Broglie, who, in 1927, was persuaded to abandon it in favor of the then mainstream Copenhagen interpretation. David Bohm, dissatisfied with the prevailing orthodoxy, rediscovered de Broglie's pilot wave theory in 1952. Bohm's suggestions were not then widely received, partly due to reasons unrelated to their content, but instead were connected to Bohm's youthful communist affiliations. De Broglie-Bohm theory was widely deemed unacceptable by mainstream theorists, mostly because of its explicit non-locality. Bell's theorem 1964 was inspired by Bell's discovery of the work of David Bohm and his subsequent wondering whether the obvious nonlocality of the theory could be eliminated. Since the 1990s, there has been renewed interest in formulating extensions to de Broglie-Bohm theory, attempting to reconcile it with special relativity and quantum field theory, besides other features such as spin or curved spatial geometries. The Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy article on quantum decoherence, Guido Bacchiagalupi, 2012, groups approaches to quantum mechanics into five groups, of which pilot wave theories are one the others being the Copenhagen interpretation, objective collapse theories, many world interpretations and modal interpretations. There are several equivalent mathematical formulations of the theory, and it is known by a number of different names. The de Broglie wave has a macroscopic analogy termed Faraday wave. <laughs> Overview De Broglie-Bohm theory is based on the following postulates. There is a configuration Q display style Q of the universe described by coordinates Q K display style Q caret K which is an element of the configuration space Q display style Q. The configuration space is different for different versions of pilot wave theory. For example, this may be the space of positions Q K display style math BF Q underscore K of n display style n particles or in case of field theory the space of field configurations Phi X display style Phi X the configuration evolves for spin equals zero according to the guiding equation m k d q k d t t equals k i'm lane psi q t equals i'm k Psi Psi Q T equals M K J K 
psi psi equals re p caret k psi psi display style m underscore k frac dq caret k dt t equals h bar nabla underscore k operator name i'm lane psi q t equals h bar operator name i'm left frac nabla underscore k psi psi right q t equals frac m underscore k math bf j underscore k psi caret asterisk psi equals operator name re left frac math bf F hat p underscore k psi psi right, where j display style math bf j is the probability current or probability flux, and p caret display style math bf hat p is the momentum operator. Here psi q t display style psi q t is the standard complex valued wave function known from quantum theory which evolves according to schrodinger's equation i t psi q t equals minus i equals 1 n 2 2 m i i 2 psi q t plus v q psi q t display style i h b a r f r a c partial partial t psi q t equals sum underscore i equals one caret n f r a c h b a r caret two two meters underscore i nabla underscore i caret two psi q t plus v q psi q t this already completes the specification of the theory for any quantum theory with Hamilton operator of type h equals one 2 m i p caret i 2 plus v q caret display style h equals sum frac 1 2 meters underscore i hat p underscore i caret 2 plus v hat q the configuration is distributed according to psi q T two display style psi q t caret two at some moment of time t display style t and this consequently holds for all times such a state is named quantum equilibrium with quantum equilibrium this theory agrees with the results of standard quantum mechanics notably even though this latter relation is frequently presented as an axiom of the theory in Bohm's original papers of 1952 it was presented as derivable from statistical mechanical arguments this argument was further supported by the work of Bohm in 1953 and was substantiated by Vigier and Bohm's paper of 1954, in which they introduced stochastic fluid fluctuations that drive a process of asymptotic relaxation from quantum non-equilibrium to quantum equilibrium rho, psi, two. Topic: <laughs> Double slit experiment. The double slit experiment is an illustration of wave particle duality. In it, a beam of particles such as electrons travels through a barrier that has two slits. If one puts a detector screen on the side beyond the barrier, the pattern of detected particles shows interference fringes characteristic of waves arriving at the screen from two sources, the two slits. However, the interference pattern is made up of individual dots corresponding to particles that had arrived on the screen. The system seems to exhibit the behavior of both waves interference patterns and particles dots on the screen. If we modify this experiment so that one slit is closed, no interference pattern is observed. Thus, the state of both slits affects the final results. We can also arrange to have a minimally invasive detector at one of the slits to detect which slit the particle went through. When we do that, the interference pattern disappears. 
The Copenhagen interpretation states that the particles are not localized in space until they are detected, so that, if there is no detector on the slits, there is no information about which slit the particle has passed through. If one slit has a detector on it, then the wavefunction collapses due to that detection. In de Broglie Bohm theory, the wavefunction is defined at both slits, but each particle has a well defined trajectory that passes through exactly one of the slits. The final position of the particle on the detector screen and the slit through which the particle passes is determined by the initial position of the particle. Such initial position is not knowable or controllable by the experimenter, so there is an appearance of randomness in the pattern of detection. In Bohm's 1952 papers he used the wavefunction to construct a quantum potential that, when included in Newton's equations, gave the trajectories of the particles streaming through the two slits. In effect the wavefunction interferes with itself and guides the particles by the quantum potential in such a way that the particles avoid the regions in which the interference is destructive and are attracted to the regions in which the interference is constructive, resulting in the interference pattern on the detector screen. To explain the behavior when the particle is detected to go through one slit, one needs to appreciate the role of the conditional wavefunction and how it results in the collapse of the wavefunction, this is explained below. The basic idea is that the environment registering the detection effectively separates the two wave packets in configuration space. An experiment has been conducted in 2016 which demonstrates the potential validity of the de Broglie Bohm theory via use of silicone oil droplets. In this experiment a drop of silicone oil is placed into a vibrating fluid bath, it then bounces across the bath propelled by waves produced by its own collisions, mimicking an electron's statistical behavior with remarkable accuracy. Topic Theory Topic Ontology The ontology of de Broglie Bohm theory consists of a configuration Q T element of Q Display style Q T in Q of the universe and a pilot wave psi q t element of c display style psi q t in math b c the configuration space q display style q can be chosen differently as in classical mechanics and standard quantum mechanics thus the ontology of pilot wave theory contains as the trajectory q t element of q display style q t in q we know from classical mechanics as the wave function psi q t element of c display style psi q t in math b c of quantum theory so, at every moment of time there exists not only a wave function, but also a well-defined configuration of the whole universe i.e., the system is defined by the boundary conditions used in solving the Schrödinger equation. The correspondence to our experiences is made by the identification of the configuration of our brain with some part of the configuration of the whole universe. Q T element of Q style Q T in Q as in classical mechanics. While the ontology of classical mechanics is part of the ontology of de Broglie Bohm theory, the dynamics are very different. In classical mechanics, the accelerations of the particles are imparted directly by forces, which exist in physical three dimensional space. In de Broglie Bohm theory, the velocities of the particles are given by the wave function, which exists in a three n dimensional configuration space, where n corresponds to the number of particles in the system. Bohm hypothesized that each particle has a complex and subtle inner structure that provides the capacity to react to the information provided by the wave function by the quantum potential. Also, unlike in classical mechanics, physical properties e.g., mass, charge are spread out over the wavefunction in de Broglie Bohm theory, not localized at the position of the particle, the wavefunction itself, and not the particles, determines the dynamical evolution of the system, the particles do not act back onto the wavefunction. 
As Bohm and Hilly worded it, the Schrödinger equation for the quantum field does not have sources, nor does it have any other way by which the field could be directly affected by the condition of the particles. The quantum theory can be understood completely in terms of the assumption that the quantum field has no sources or other forms of dependence on the particles. P. Holland considers this lack of reciprocal action of particles and wave function to be one among the many non-classical properties exhibited by this theory. It should be noted, however, that Holland has later called this a merely apparent lack of back reaction, due to the incompleteness of the description. In what follows below, we will give the setup for one particle moving in R 3 R 3 followed by the setup for n particles moving in three dimensions. In the first instance, configuration space and real space are the same, while in the second, real space is still R 3 but configuration space becomes R 3 n while the particle positions themselves are in real space, the velocity field and wavefunction are on configuration space, which is how particles are entangled with each other in this theory. Extensions to this theory include spin and more complicated configuration spaces. We use variations of Q for particle positions, while psi represents the complex valued wave function on configuration space topic <inaudible> <inaudible> guiding equation for a spinless single particle moving in r 3 display style math b r caret 3 the particle's velocity is given by d q d T T equals M I'm psi psi Q T display style frac d math bf q d t t equals frac h bar m operator name I'm left frac nabla psi psi right math bf q t for many particles we label them as Q K display style math BF Q underscore K for the K display style K th particle and their velocities are given by D Q K D T T equals M K I'm K Psi Psi Q one Q two Q N T Display style FRAC D Math BF Q underscore K D T T equals FRAC H B A R M underscore K operator name I'm left FRAC Nabla underscore K psi psi right Math BF Q underscore one Math BF Q underscore two L dots Math BF Q underscore N T The main fact to notice is that this velocity field depends on the actual positions of all of the n display style n particles in the universe as explained below in most experimental situations the influence of all of those particles can be encapsulated into an effective wave function for a subsystem of the universe topic <laughs> schrodinger's equation The one-particle Schrödinger equation governs the time evolution of a complex-valued wavefunction on R three. Display style math b r caret three. The equation represents a quantized version of the total energy of a classical system evolving under a real-valued potential function v. Display style v on R three. Display style math b r caret three i t 
psi equals minus 2 2 m 2 psi plus v psi Display style i h b a r frac partial partial t psi equals frac h b a r caret two two meters nabla caret two psi plus v psi. For many particles, the equation is the same except that psi display style psi and v display style v are now in configuration space r three n display style math b r caret 3 n i t psi equals minus k equals 1 n 2 2 m k k 2 psi plus v psi display style i h b a r f r a c partial partial t psi equals sum underscore k equals 1 caret n f r a c h b a r caret 2 2 meters underscore k nabla underscore k caret 2 psi plus v psi this is the same wave function as in conventional quantum mechanics topic relation to the born rule In Bohm's original papers, Bohm 1952, he discusses how de Broglie Bohm theory results in the usual measurement results of quantum mechanics. The main idea is that this is true if the positions of the particles satisfy the statistical distribution given by psi 2 display style psi caret 2 and that distribution is guaranteed to be true for all time by the guiding equation if the initial distribution of the particles satisfies psi 2 display style psi caret 2 for a given experiment we can postulate this as being true and verify experimentally that it does indeed hold true as it does but as argued in Durer et al one needs to argue that this distribution for subsystems is typical they argue that psi 2 display style psi caret 2 by virtue of its equivariance under the dynamical evolution of the system, is the appropriate measure of typicality for initial conditions of the positions of the particles. They then prove that the vast majority of possible initial configurations will give rise to statistics obeying the Born rule, i.e., psi 2 display style psi caret 2 for measurement outcomes. In summary, in a universe governed by the de Broglie-Bohm dynamics, Born rule behavior is typical. The situation is thus analogous to the situation in classical statistical physics. A low entropy initial condition will, with overwhelmingly high probability, evolve into a higher entropy state. Behavior consistent with the second law of thermodynamics is typical. There are, of course, anomalous initial conditions that would give rise to violations of the second law. However, in the absence of some very detailed evidence supporting the actual realization of one of those special initial conditions, it would be quite unreasonable to expect anything but the actually observed uniform increase of entropy. Similarly, in the de Broglie-Bohm theory, there are anomalous initial conditions that would produce measurement statistics in violation of the Born rule i.e., in conflict with the predictions of standard quantum theory. But the typicality theorem shows that, in the absence of some specific reason to believe that one of those special initial conditions was in fact realized, the Born rule behavior is what one should expect. It is in that qualified sense that the Born rule is, for the de Broglie-Bohm theory, a theorem rather than as in ordinary quantum theory, an additional postulate. It can also be shown that a distribution of particles that is not distributed according to the Born rule, that is, a distribution out of quantum equilibrium and evolving under the de Broglie-Bohm dynamics is overwhelmingly likely to evolve dynamically into a state distributed as psi 2 display style psi caret 2 topic the conditional wave function of a subsystem 
In the formulation of the de Broglie Bohm theory, there is only a wave function for the entire universe, which always evolves by the Schrödinger equation. It should, however, be noted that the universe is simply the system limited by the same boundary conditions used to solve the Schrödinger equation. However, once the theory is formulated, it is convenient to introduce a notion of wave function also for subsystems of the universe. Let us write the wave function of the universe as psi t q i q 2 display style psi t q caret text i q caret text 2 where q i display style q caret text i denotes the configuration variables associated to some subsystem i of the universe and q 2 display style q caret text 2 denotes the remaining configuration variables denote respectively by q i t display style q caret text i t and q 2 t display style q caret text 2 t the actual configuration of subsystem i and of the rest of the universe for simplicity we consider here only the spinless case the conditional wave function of subsystem i is defined by psi i t q i equals psi t q i q 2 t Display style psi caret text i t q caret text i equals psi t q caret text i q caret text two t. It follows immediately from the fact that q t equals q i t q two t. Display style q t equals q caret text i t q caret text two t satisfies the guiding equation that also the configuration q i t display style q caret text i t satisfies a guiding equation identical to the one presented in the formulation of the theory with the universal wave function psi display style psi replaced with the conditional wave function psi i display style psi caret text i also the fact that q t display style q t is random with probability density given by the square modulus of psi t display style psi t c d o t implies that the conditional probability density of Q I T display style Q caret text I T given Q two T display style Q caret text two T is given by the square modulus of the normalized conditional wave function psi I T display style psi caret text I T C D O T in the terminology of Dur et al., this fact is called the fundamental conditional probability formula. Unlike the universal wave function, the conditional wave function of a subsystem does not always evolve by the Schrödinger equation, but in many situations it does. For instance, if the universal wave function factors as psi t q i q two equals psi I T Q I Psi two T Q two Display style psi T Q carrot text I Q carrot text two equals psi carrot text I T Q carrot text I Psi carrot text two T Q carrot text two then the conditional wave function of subsystem i is up to an irrelevant scalar factor equal to psi i display style psi caret text i 
This is what standard quantum theory would regard as the wave function of subsystem I. If, in addition, the Hamiltonian does not contain an interaction term between subsystems I and two, then psi I Display style psi caret text i to satisfy a Schrödinger equation. More generally, assume that the universal wave function psi display style psi can be written in the form psi t q i q two equals psi i t q I psi two T Q two plus Phi T Q I Q two Display style psi t q caret text i q caret text two equals psi caret text i t q caret text i psi caret text two t q caret text two plus phi t q caret text i q caret text two, where phi display style phi solves Schrödinger equation and phi t q i q Two T equals zero. Display style phi T Q caret text I Q caret text two T equals zero. For all T display style T and Q I display style Q caret text I. Then again, the conditional wave function of subsystem I is up to an irrelevant scalar factor equal to psi i display style psi caret text i, and if the Hamiltonian does not contain an interaction term between subsystems I and two, then psi i display style psi caret text i satisfies a Schrödinger equation. The fact that the conditional wave function of a subsystem does not always evolve by the Schrödinger equation is related to the fact that the usual collapse rule of standard quantum theory emerges from the Bohmian formalism when one considers conditional wave functions of subsystems. Topic: <laughs> Extensions. Topic: <laughs> Relativity Pilot wave theory is explicitly nonlocal, which is in ostensible conflict with special relativity. Various extensions of Bohm-like mechanics exist that attempt to resolve this problem. Bohm himself in 1953 presented an extension of the theory satisfying the Dirac equation for a single particle. However, this was not extensible to the many-particle case because it used an absolute time. A renewed interest in constructing Lorentz invariant extensions of Bohmian theory arose in the 1990s. See Bohm and Hilly, The Undivided Universe, and, and references therein. Another approach is given in the work of Durr et al., in which they use Bohm-Dirac models and a Lorentz invariant foliation of space-time. Thus, Durr et al. 1999 showed that it is possible to formally restore Lorentz invariance for the Bohm-Dirac theory by introducing additional structure. This approach still requires a foliation of spacetime. While this is in conflict with the standard interpretation of relativity, the preferred foliation, if unobservable, does not lead to any empirical conflicts with relativity. In 2013, Durr et al. suggested that the required foliation could be covariantly determined by the wave function. The relation between nonlocality and preferred foliation can be better understood as follows. In de Broglie Bohm theory, nonlocality manifests as the fact that the velocity and acceleration of one particle depends on the instantaneous positions of all other particles. On the other hand, in the theory of relativity, the concept of instantaneousness does not have an invariant meaning. Thus, to define particle trajectories, one needs an additional rule that defines which spacetime points should be considered instantaneous. The simplest way to achieve this is to introduce a preferred foliation of spacetime by hand, such that each hypersurface of the foliation defines a hypersurface of equal time. 
Initially, it had been considered impossible to set out a description of photon trajectories in the de Broglie Bohm theory in view of the difficulties of describing bosons relativistically. In 1996, Partha Gose had presented a relativistic quantum mechanical description of spin 0 and spin 1 bosons starting from the Duffin Kemmer Petiau equation, setting out Bohmian trajectories for massive bosons and for massless bosons and therefore photons. In 2001, Jean Pierre Vigier emphasized the importance of deriving a well defined description of light in terms of particle trajectories in the framework of either the Bohmian mechanics or the Nelson stochastic mechanics. The same year, Gose worked out Bohmian photon trajectories for specific cases. Subsequent weak measurement experiments yielded trajectories that coincide with the predicted trajectories. Chris Dudney and G. Horton have proposed a relativistically covariant, wave functional formulation of Bohm's quantum field theory and have extended it to a form that allows the inclusion of gravity. Nikolic has proposed a Lorentz covariant formulation of the Bohmian interpretation of many particle wave functions. He has developed a generalized relativistic invariant probabilistic interpretation of quantum theory, in which psi 2 display style psi caret 2 is no longer a probability density in space but a probability density in space time he uses this generalized probabilistic interpretation to formulate a relativistic covariant version of de broglie bohm theory without introducing a preferred foliation of space time his work also covers the extension of the bohmian interpretation to a quantization of fields and strings Roderick I. Sutherland at the University in Sydney has a Lagrangian formalism for the pilot wave and its beebles. It draws on Yakur Aharonov's retrocasual weak measurements to explain many particle entanglement in a special relativistic way without the need for configuration space. The basic idea was already published by Costa de Beauregard in the 1950s and is also used by John Kramer in his transactional interpretation except the beebles that exist between the von Neumann strong projection operator measurements. Sutherland's Lagrangian includes two-way action-reaction between pilot wave and beebles. Therefore, it is a post-quantum non-statistical theory with final boundary conditions that violate the no-signal theorems of quantum theory. Just as special relativity is a limiting case of general relativity when the spacetime curvature vanishes, so, too is statistical no-entanglement signaling quantum theory with the Born rule a limiting case of the post-quantum action-reaction Lagrangian when the reaction is set to zero and the final boundary condition is integrated out. <laughs> Spin To incorporate spin, the wavefunction becomes complex vector valued. The value space is called spin space. For a spin minus one half particle, spin space can be taken to be c two. Display style math b c caret two. The guiding equation is modified by taking inner products in spin space to reduce the complex vectors to complex numbers. The Schrödinger equation is modified by adding a Pauli spin term. D Q K D T T equals M K I'm psi D K psi 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 Q one Q N T I T psi equals minus K equals one N two two M K D K two plus V minus K equals one N mu K S K 
SKB QK Psi display style begin aligned frac D math BF Q underscore K DT T and equals frac H B A R M underscore K operator name I'm left frac Psi D underscore K Psi 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 right math BF Q underscore one L dots math BF Q underscore N T I H B A R frac partial partial T Psi and equals equals left sum underscore k equals one carrot n frac h b a r carrot two two meters underscore k d underscore k carrot two plus v sum underscore k equals one carrot n mu underscore k frac math b f s underscore k h b a r s underscore k c d o t math b f b math b f q underscore k right psi end aligned where m k e k mu k display style m underscore K e underscore K mu underscore K the mass charge and magnetic moment of the K display style K th particle SK display style math BF s underscore K the appropriate spin operator acting in the K display style K th particles spin space SK display style s underscore K spin quantum number of the K display style K th particle s K equals 1 2 display style s underscore k equals 1 half for electron a display style math bf a is vector potential in r 3 display style math b r caret 3 b equals times Display style math bf b equals nabla times math bf a is the magnetic field in R three. Display style math b r caret three d k equals k minus i e k a q k Display style d underscore k equals nabla underscore k frac i e underscore k h b a r math b f a math b f q underscore k is the covariant derivative involving the vector potential ascribed to the coordinates of k. Display style k th particle in SI units psi. Display style psi. The wave function defined on the multidimensional configuration space, e.g., a system consisting of two spin minus one half particles and one spin one particle has a wave function of the form psi r nine times r c two c two c three. Display style psi math b r caret nine times math b r to math b c caret two o times math b c caret two o times math b c caret three, where display style o times is a tensor product, so this spin space is twelve dimensional. Display style c d o t c d o t is the inner product in spin space c d Display style math b c caret d phi psi equals s equals one d phi s psi s display style phi psi equals sum underscore s equals one caret d phi underscore s caret asterisk psi underscore s Topic: Quantum field theory. In Der et al., the authors describe an extension of de Broglie-Bohm theory for handling creation and annihilation operators, which they refer to as Bell-type quantum field theories. The basic idea is that configuration space becomes the disjoint space of all possible configurations of any number of particles. For part of the time, the system evolves deterministically under the guiding equation with a fixed number of particles. But under a stochastic process, particles may be created and annihilated. 
The distribution of creation events is dictated by the wavefunction. The wavefunction itself is evolving at all times over the full multi-particle configuration space. Hervoye Nikolic introduces a purely deterministic de Broglie Bohm theory of particle creation and destruction, according to which particle trajectories are continuous, but particle detectors behave as if particles have been created or destroyed even when a true creation or destruction of particles does not take place. Curved space To extend de Broglie Bohm theory to curved space, Riemannian manifolds in mathematical parlance, one simply notes that all of the elements of these equations make sense, such as gradients and Laplacians. Thus, we use equations that have the same form as above. Topological and boundary conditions may apply in supplementing the evolution of Schrödinger's equation. For a de Broglie Bohm theory on curved space with spin, the spin space becomes a vector bundle over configuration space, and the potential in Schrödinger's equation becomes a local self adjoint operator acting on that space. Exploiting nonlocality The causal interpretation of quantum mechanics set up by de Broglie and Bohm was extended later by Bohm, Vigier, Hilly, Valentini and others to include stochastic properties. Bohm and other physicists, including Valentini, view the Born rule linking r to the probability density function ρ equals r 2 display style row equals r caret 2 as representing not a basic law but rather as constituting a result of a system having reached quantum equilibrium during the course of the time development under the schrodinger equation it can be shown that once an equilibrium has been reached the system remains in such equilibrium over the course of its further evolution this follows from the continuity equation associated with the schrodinger evolution of psi display style psi However, it is less straightforward to demonstrate whether and how such an equilibrium is reached in the first place. Antony Valentini has extended the de Broglie-Bohm theory to include signal nonlocality that would allow entanglement to be used as a standalone communication channel without a secondary classical key signal to unlock the message encoded in the entanglement. This violates orthodox quantum theory but has the virtue that it makes the parallel universes of the chaotic inflation theory observable in principle. Unlike de Broglie-Bohm theory, Valentini's theory has the wavefunction evolution also depending on the ontological variables. This introduces an instability, a feedback loop that pushes the hidden variables out of sub-quantal heat death. The resulting theory becomes nonlinear and non-unitary. Valentin argues that the laws of quantum mechanics are emergent and form a quantum equilibrium that has an analogous status to that of thermal equilibrium in classical dynamics. In principle therefore, other quantum non-equilibrium distributions may be potentially observed and exploited, for which the statistical predictions of quantum theory are violated. It is controversially argued that quantum theory is merely a special case of a much wider nonlinear physics, a physics in which non-local signaling is possible, and in which the uncertainty principle can be violated. <laughs> <laughs> Results Below are some highlights of the results that arise out of an analysis of de Broglie-Bohm theory. Experimental results agree with all of the standard predictions of quantum mechanics insofar as the latter has predictions. However, while standard quantum mechanics is limited to discussing the results of measurements, de Broglie-Bohm theory is a theory that governs the dynamics of a system without the intervention of outside observers p. 117 in Bell. The basis for agreement with standard quantum mechanics is that the particles are distributed according to psi 2 display style psi caret 2 this is a statement of observer ignorance but it can be proven that for a universe governed by this theory this will typically be the case there is apparent collapse of the wave function governing subsystems of the universe but there is no collapse of the universal wave function topic <laughs> <laughs> measuring spin and polarization 
According to ordinary quantum theory, it is not possible to measure the spin or polarization of a particle directly, instead, the component in one direction is measured. The outcome from a single particle may be 1, meaning that the particle is aligned with the measuring apparatus, or minus 1, meaning that it is aligned the opposite way. For an ensemble of particles, if we expect the particles to be aligned, the results are all 1. If we expect them to be aligned oppositely, the results are all minus 1. For other alignments, we expect some results to be 1 and some to be minus 1 with a probability that depends on the expected alignment. For a full explanation of this, see the stern gerlach experiment. In de Broglie-Bohm theory, the results of a spin experiment cannot be analyzed without some knowledge of the experimental setup. It is possible to modify the setup so that the trajectory of the particle is unaffected, but that the particle with one setup registers as spin up, while in the other setup it registers as spin down. Thus, for the de Broglie-Bohm theory, the particle's spin is not an intrinsic property of the particle, instead spin is, so to speak, in the wavefunction of the particle in relation to the particular device being used to measure the spin. This is an illustration of what is sometimes referred to as contextuality and is related to naive realism about operators. Interpretationally, measurement results are a deterministic property of the system and its environment, which includes information about the experimental setup including the context of co-measured observables. In no sense does the system itself possess the property being measured, as would have been the case in classical physics. Measurements, the quantum formalism, and observer independence De Broglie-Bohm theory gives the same results as quantum mechanics. It treats the wavefunction as a fundamental object in the theory, as the wavefunction describes how the particles move. This means that no experiment can distinguish between the two theories. This section outlines the ideas as to how the standard quantum formalism arises out of quantum mechanics. References include Bohm's original 1952 paper and Durr et al. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Collapse of the wavefunction. De Broglie-Bohm theory is a theory that applies primarily to the whole universe. That is, there is a single wavefunction governing the motion of all of the particles in the universe according to the guiding equation. Theoretically, the motion of one particle depends on the positions of all of the other particles in the universe. In some situations, such as in experimental systems, we can represent the system itself in terms of a de Broglie-Bohm theory in which the wavefunction of the system is obtained by conditioning on the environment of the system. Thus, the system can be analyzed with Schrödinger's equation and the guiding equation, with an initial psi 2 display style psi 2 Distribution for the particles in the system see the section on the conditional wavefunction of a subsystem for details. It requires a special setup for the conditional wavefunction of a system to obey a quantum evolution. When a system interacts with its environment, such as through a measurement, the conditional wavefunction of the system evolves in a different way. The evolution of the universal wavefunction can become such that the wavefunction of the system appears to be in a superposition of distinct states. But if the environment has recorded the results of the experiment, then using the actual Bohmian configuration of the environment to condition on, the conditional wavefunction collapses to just one alternative, the one corresponding with the measurement results. Collapse of the universal wavefunction never occurs in de Broglie-Bohm theory. Its entire evolution is governed by Schrödinger's equation, and the particle's evolutions are governed by the guiding equation. Collapse only occurs in a phenomenological way for systems that seem to follow their own Schrödinger's equation. As this is an effective description of the system, it is a matter of choice as to what to define the experimental system to include, and this will affect when collapse occurs. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Operators as observables. In the standard quantum formalism, measuring observables is generally thought of as measuring operators on the Hilbert space. For example, measuring position is considered to be a measurement of the position operator. This relationship between physical measurements and Hilbert space operators is, for standard quantum mechanics, an additional axiom of the theory. The de Broglie-Bohm theory, by contrast, requires no such measurement axioms and measurement as such is not a dynamically distinct or special subcategory of physical processes in the theory. 
In particular, the usual operators as observables formalism is, for de Broglie Bohm theory, a theorem. A major point of the analysis is that many of the measurements of the observables do not correspond to properties of the particles, they are as in the case of spin discussed above, measurements of the wavefunction. In the history of de Broglie-Bohm theory, the proponents have often had to deal with claims that this theory is impossible. Such arguments are generally based on inappropriate analysis of operators as observables. If one believes that spin measurements are indeed measuring the spin of a particle that existed prior to the measurement, then one does reach contradictions. De Broglie-Bohm theory deals with this by noting that spin is not a feature of the particle, but rather that of the wavefunction. As such, it only has a definite outcome once the experimental apparatus is chosen. Once that is taken into account, the impossibility theorems become irrelevant. There have also been claims that experiments reject the Bohm trajectories in favor of the standard QM lines. But as shown in other work, such experiments cited above only disprove a misinterpretation of the de Broglie-Bohm theory, not the theory itself. There are also objections to this theory based on what it says about particular situations usually involving eigenstates of an operator. For example, the ground state of hydrogen is a real wavefunction. According to the guiding equation, this means that the electron is at rest when in this state. Nevertheless, it is distributed according to psi 2 display style psi caret 2 and no contradiction to experimental results is possible to detect. Operators as observables leads many to believe that many operators are equivalent. De Broglie-Bohm theory, from this perspective, chooses the position observable as a favored observable rather than, say, the momentum observable. Again, the link to the position observable is a consequence of the dynamics. The motivation for de Broglie-Bohm theory is to describe a system of particles. This implies that the goal of the theory is to describe the positions of those particles at all times. Other observables do not have this compelling ontological status. Having definite positions explains having definite results such as flashes on a detector screen. Other observables would not lead to that conclusion, but there need not be any problem in defining a mathematical theory for other observables, see Hyman et al., for an exploration of the fact that a probability density and probability current can be defined for any set of commuting operators. <laughs> Hidden variables. De Broglie-Bohm theory is often referred to as a hidden variable theory. Bohm used this description in his original papers on the subject, writing, From the point of view of the usual interpretation, these additional elements or parameters permitting a detailed causal and continuous description of all processes could be called hidden variables. Bohm and Hilly later stated that they found Bohm's choice of the term hidden variables to be too restrictive. In particular, they argued that a particle is not actually hidden but rather, is what is most directly manifested in an observation though its properties cannot be observed with arbitrary precision within the limits set by uncertainty principle. However, others nevertheless treat the term, hidden variable. As a suitable description, generalized particle trajectories can be extrapolated from numerous weak measurements on an ensemble of equally prepared systems, and such trajectories coincide with the de Broglie-Bohm trajectories. In particular, an experiment with two entangled photons, in which a set of Bohmian trajectories for one of the photons was determined using weak measurements and post-selection, can be understood in terms of a non-local connection between that photon's trajectory and the other photon's polarization. However, not only the de Broglie-Bohm interpretation, but also many other interpretations of quantum mechanics that do not include such trajectories are consistent with such experimental evidence. Topic: <laughs> Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. The Heisenberg's uncertainty principle states that when two complementary measurements are made, there is a limit to the product of their accuracy. As an example, if one measures the position with an accuracy of delta x display style delta x and the momentum with an accuracy of delta p display style delta p then delta x delta p h 
Display style delta x delta p g t r sim h. If we make further measurements in order to get more information, we disturb the system and change the trajectory into a new one depending on the measurement setup. Therefore, the measurement results are still subject to Heisenberg's uncertainty relation. In de Broglie-Bohm theory, there is always a matter of fact about the position and momentum of a particle. Each particle has a well-defined trajectory, as well as a wave function. Observers have limited knowledge as to what this trajectory is, and thus of the position and momentum. It is the lack of knowledge of the particle's trajectory that accounts for the uncertainty relation. What one can know about a particle at any given time is described by the wave function. Since the uncertainty relation can be derived from the wave function in other interpretations of quantum mechanics, it can be likewise derived in the epistemic sense mentioned above on the de Broglie-Bohm theory. To put the statement differently, the particle's positions are only known statistically. As in classical mechanics, successive observations of the particle's positions refine the experimenter's knowledge of the particle's initial conditions. Thus, with succeeding observations, the initial conditions become more and more restricted. This formalism is consistent with the normal use of the Schrödinger equation. For the derivation of the uncertainty relation, see Heisenberg uncertainty principle, noting that this article describes the principle from the viewpoint of the Copenhagen interpretation. Topic: <laughs> Quantum entanglement, Einstein-Podolsky-Rosen paradox, Bell's theorem, and nonlocality. De Broglie-Bohm theory highlighted the issue of nonlocality, it inspired John Stuart Bell to prove his now famous theorem, which in turn led to the Bell test experiments. In the Einstein-Podolsky-Rosen paradox, the authors describe a thought experiment that one could perform on a pair of particles that have interacted, the results of which they interpreted as indicating that quantum mechanics is an incomplete theory. Decades later John Bell proved Bell's theorem CP, 14 in Bell, in which he showed that, if they are to agree with the empirical predictions of quantum mechanics, all such hidden variable Completions of quantum mechanics must either be non-local as the Bohm interpretation is or give up the assumption that experiments produce unique results see counterfactual definiteness and many worlds interpretation. In particular, Bell proved that any local theory with unique results must make empirical predictions satisfying a statistical constraint called Bell's inequality. Alain Aspect performed a series of Bell test experiments that test Bell's inequality using an EPR type setup. Aspects results show experimentally that Bell's inequality is in fact violated, meaning that the relevant quantum mechanical predictions are correct. In these Bell test experiments, entangled pairs of particles are created, the particles are separated, traveling to remote measuring apparatus. The orientation of the measuring apparatus can be changed while the particles are in flight, demonstrating the apparent nonlocality of the effect. The de Broglie-Bohm theory makes the same empirically correct predictions for the Bell test experiments as ordinary quantum mechanics. It is able to do this because it is manifestly non-local. It is often criticized or rejected based on this. Bell's attitude was, "It is a merit of the de Broglie-Bohm version to bring this non-locality out so explicitly that it cannot be ignored." The de Broglie-Bohm theory describes the physics in the Bell test experiments as follows. To understand the evolution of the particles, we need to set up a wave equation for both particles. The orientation of the apparatus affects the wave function. The particles in the experiment follow the guidance of the wave function. It is the wave function that carries the faster than light effect of changing the orientation of the apparatus. An analysis of exactly what kind of nonlocality is present and how it is compatible with relativity can be found in Modlin. Note that in Bell's work, and in more detail in Maudlin's work, it is shown that the nonlocality does not allow signaling at speeds faster than light. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Classical limit. Bohm's formulation of de Broglie-Bohm theory in terms of a classically looking version has the merits that the emergence of classical behavior seems to follow immediately for any situation in which the quantum potential is negligible, as noted by Bohm in 1952. Modern methods of decoherence are relevant to an analysis of this limit. See Alori et al. for steps towards a rigorous analysis. Quantum trajectory method 
Work by Robert E. Wyatt in the early 2000s attempted to use the bohm particles as an adaptive mesh that follows the actual trajectory of a quantum state in time and space. In the quantum trajectory method, one samples the quantum wavefunction with a mesh of quadrature points. One then evolves the quadrature points in time according to the Bohm equations of motion. At each time step, one then re-synthesizes the wavefunction from the points, recomputes the quantum forces, and continues the calculation. QuickTime movies of this for H plus H2 reactive scattering can be found on the Wyatt Group website at UT Austin. This approach has been adapted, extended, and used by a number of researchers in the chemical physics community as a way to compute semi-classical and quasi-classical molecular dynamics. A recent 2007 issue of the Journal of Physical Chemistry A was dedicated to Professor Wyatt and his work on computational Bohmian dynamics. Eric R. Bittner's group at the University of Houston has advanced a statistical variant of this approach that uses Bayesian sampling technique to sample the quantum density and compute the quantum potential on a structureless mesh of points. This technique was recently used to estimate quantum effects in the heat capacity of small clusters n for n approximately equals 100. There remain difficulties using the Bohmian approach, mostly associated with the formation of singularities in the quantum potential due to nodes in the quantum wavefunction. In general, nodes forming due to interference effects lead to the case where r minus 1 2 r infinity display style r caret minus 1 nabla caret 2 r to nft this results in an infinite force on the sample particles forcing them to move away from the node and often crossing the path of other sample points which violates single-valuedness. Various schemes have been developed to overcome this, however, no general solution has yet emerged. These methods, as does Bohm's hamilton jacobi formulation, do not apply to situations in which the full dynamics of spin need to be taken into account. The properties of trajectories in the de broglie bohm theory differ significantly from the Moyle quantum trajectories. <laughs> Similarities with the many-worlds interpretation Kim Joris Bostrom has proposed a non-relativistic quantum mechanical theory that combines elements of the de broglie bohm mechanics and that of Everett's many worlds. In particular, the unreal MW interpretation of Hawking and Weinberg is similar to the Bohmian concept of unreal empty branch worlds. The second issue with Bohmian mechanics may at first sight appear rather harmless, but which on a closer look develops considerable destructive power, the issue of empty branches. These are the components of the post-measurement state that do not guide any particles because they do not have the actual configuration Q in their support. At first sight, the empty branches do not appear problematic but on the contrary very helpful as they enable the theory to explain unique outcomes of measurements. Also, they seem to explain why there is an effective collapse of the wavefunction, as in ordinary quantum mechanics. On a closer view, though, one must admit that these empty branches do not actually disappear. As the wavefunction is taken to describe a really existing field, all their branches really exist and will evolve forever by the Schrödinger dynamics, no matter how many of them will become empty in the course of the evolution. Every branch of the global wavefunction potentially describes a complete world which is, according to Bohm's ontology, only a possible world that would be the actual world if only it were filled with particles, and which is in every respect identical to a corresponding world in Everett's theory. Only one branch at a time is occupied by particles, thereby representing the actual world, while all other branches, though really existing as part of a really existing wavefunction, are empty and thus contain some sort of zombie worlds with planets, oceans, trees, cities, cars and people who talk like us and behave like us, but who do not actually exist. Now, if the Everdian theory may be accused of ontological extravagance, then Bohmian mechanics could be accused of ontological wastefulness. On top of the ontology of empty branches comes the additional ontology of particle positions that are, on account of the quantum equilibrium hypothesis, forever unknown to the observer. Yet, the actual configuration is never needed for the calculation of the statistical predictions in experimental reality, for these can be obtained by mere wavefunction algebra. From this perspective, Bohmian mechanics may appear as a wasteful and redundant theory. I think it is considerations like these that are the biggest obstacle in the way of a general acceptance of Bohmian mechanics. 
Many authors have expressed critical views of the de Broglie Bohm theory by comparing it to Everett's many worlds approach. Many but not all proponents of the de Broglie Bohm theory, such as Bohm and Bell, interpret the universal wave function as physically real. According to some supporters of Everett's theory, if the never collapsing wave function is taken to be physically real, then it is natural to interpret the theory as having the same many worlds as Everett's theory. In the Everettian view, the role of the Bohmian particle is to act as a pointer, tagging, or selecting, just one branch of the universal wave function. the assumption that this branch indicates which wave packet determines the observed result of a given experiment is called the result assumption. The other branches are designated empty, and implicitly assumed by Bohm to be devoid of conscious observers. H. Dieter Zay comments on these empty branches. David Deutsch has expressed the same point more acerbically. Topic Occam's razor criticism Both Hugh Everett III and Bohm treated the wavefunction as a physically real field. Everett's many worlds interpretation is an attempt to demonstrate that the wavefunction alone is sufficient to account for all our observations. When we see the particle detectors flash or hear the click of a Geiger counter, then Everett's theory interprets this as our wavefunction responding to changes in the detector's wavefunction, which is responding in turn to the passage of another wavefunction, which we think of as a particle, but is actually just another wave packet. No particle in the Bohm sense of having a defined position and velocity exists, according to that theory. For this reason Everett sometimes referred to his own many worlds approach as the pure wave theory. Talking of Bohm's 1952 approach, Everett says, in the Evertian view, then, the Bohm particles are superfluous entities, similar to, and equally as unnecessary as, for example, the luminiferous ether, which was found to be unnecessary in special relativity. This argument of Everett is sometimes called the redundancy argument, since the superfluous particles are redundant in the sense of Occam's razor. According to Brown and Wallace, the de Broglie Bohm particles play no role in the solution of the measurement problem. These authors claim that the result assumption see above is inconsistent with the view that there is no measurement problem in the predictable outcome i.e. single outcome case. These authors also claim that a standard tacit assumption of the de Broglie-Bohm theory that an observer becomes aware of configurations of particles of ordinary objects by means of correlations between such configurations and the configuration of the particles in the observer's brain is unreasonable. This conclusion has been challenged by Valentini, who argues that the entirety of such objections arises from a failure to interpret de Broglie-Bohm theory on its own terms. According to Peter R. Holland, in a wider Hamiltonian framework, theories can be formulated in which particles do act back on the wave function. <laughs> Derivations De Broglie-Bohm theory has been derived many times and in many ways. Below are six derivations, all of which are very different and lead to different ways of understanding and extending this theory. Schrödinger's equation can be derived by using Einstein's light quanta hypothesis. E equals omega. Display style E equals h b a r omega. And De Broglie's hypothesis. P equals k display style math bfp equals hbar math bfk the guiding equation can be derived in a similar fashion we assume a plane wave psi x t equals a e i k x minus omega T display style psi math bf x t equals a caret i math bf k c d o t math bf x omega t. Notice that i k equals psi psi display style i math bf k equals nabla psi psi. Assuming that p equals m V display style math bfp equals m math bf v for the particle's actual velocity we have that v equals m i'm psi psi 
Display style Math BF V equals FRAC HBAR M operator name I'm left FRAC Nabla Psi Psi right. Thus, we have the guiding equation. Notice that this derivation does not use Schrödinger's equation. Preserving the density under the time evolution is another method of derivation. This is the method that Bell cites. It is this method that generalizes to many possible alternative theories. The starting point is the continuity equation. Minus rho t equals rho v psi. Display style frac partial rho partial t equals nabla c d o t rho v caret psi for the density rho equals psi two display style rho equals psi caret two. This equation describes a probability flow along a current. We take the velocity field associated with this current as the velocity field whose integral curves yield the motion of the particle. A method applicable for particles without spin is to do a polar decomposition of the wave function and transform Schrödinger's equation into two coupled equations, the continuity equation from above and the Hamilton-Jacobi equation. This is the method used by Bohm in 1952. The decomposition and equations are as follows: decomposition psi x t equals r x t E I S X T Display style psi Math BF X T equals R Math BF X T E carrot is Math BF X T H B A R Note that R two X T Display style R carrot two Math BF X T corresponds to the probability density rho x t equals psi x t 2 display style rho math bf x t equals psi math bf x t caret 2 continuity equation minus rho x t t equals rho x t s x t m display style frac partial rho math bf x t partial t equals nabla c d o t left rho math bf x t frac nabla s math bf x t m right hamilton jacobi equation s X T T equals minus one two M S X T two plus V minus two two M two R X T R X T display style frac partial s math bf x t partial t equals left frac one two meters nabla s math bf x t caret two plus v frac h bar caret two two meters frac nabla caret two r math bf x t r math bf x t right the Hamilton-Jacobi equation is the equation derived from a Newtonian system with potential v minus two two m two r r display style v frac h bar caret two two meters frac nabla caret two r r and velocity field s m Display style frac nabla s m the potential v display style v is the classical potential that appears in Schrödinger's equation and the other term involving r display style r 
is the quantum potential, terminology introduced by Bohm. This leads to viewing the quantum theory as particles moving under the classical force modified by a quantum force. However, unlike standard Newtonian mechanics, the initial velocity field is already specified by s m display style frac nabla s m which is a symptom of this being a first order theory not a second order theory a fourth derivation was given by der et al in their derivation they derive the velocity field by demanding the appropriate transformation properties given by the various symmetries that schrodinger's equation satisfies once the wave function is suitably transformed the guiding equation is what emerges from that analysis a fifth derivation, given by Durr et al., is appropriate for generalization to quantum field theory and the Dirac equation. The idea is that a velocity field can also be understood as a first-order differential operator acting on functions. Thus, if we know how it acts on functions, we know what it is. Then given the Hamiltonian operator h h, the equation to satisfy for all functions f display style f with associated multiplication operator f caret display style hat f is v f q equals re psi i h f caret psi 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 q Display style v f q equals operator name re frac left psi frac i h bar h hat f psi right psi psi q, where v w display style v w is the local Hermitian inner product on the value space of the wave function. This formulation allows for stochastic theories such as the creation and annihilation of particles. A further derivation has been given by Peter R. Holland, on which he bases the entire work presented in his quantum physics textbook The Quantum Theory of Motion, a main reference book on the de Broglie Bohm theory. It is based on three basic postulates and an additional fourth postulate that links the wave function to measurement probabilities. One. A physical system consists in a spatiotemporally propagating wave and a point particle guided by it. 2. The wave is described mathematically by a solution psi to Schrödinger's wave equation. 3. The particle motion is described by a solution to x t equals s x t T M display style math bf dot x t equals nabla s math bf x t t per meter in dependence on initial condition x t equals zero display style math bf x t equals zero with s display style s the phase of psi Display style psi. The fourth postulate is subsidiary yet consistent with the first three. Four. The probability rho x t display style rho math bf x t to find the particle in the differential volume d three x display style d caret three x at time t equals psi x t 2 display style psi math bf x t caret 2 topic history de broglie bohm theory has a history of different formulations and names in this section each stage is given a name and a main reference Topic. Pilot wave theory Louis de Broglie presented his pilot wave theory at the 1927 Solvay Conference, after close collaboration with Schrödinger, who developed his wave equation for de Broglie's theory. 
At the end of the presentation, Wolfgang Pauli pointed out that it was not compatible with a semi-classical technique Fermi had previously adopted in the case of inelastic scattering. Contrary to a popular legend, de Broglie actually gave the correct rebuttal that the particular technique could not be generalized for Pauli's purpose, although the audience might have been lost in the technical details and de Broglie's mild manner left the impression that Pauli's objection was valid. He was eventually persuaded to abandon this theory nonetheless because he was discouraged by criticisms which it roused. De Broglie's theory already applies to multiple spin-less particles, but lacks an adequate theory of measurement as no one understood quantum decoherence at the time. An analysis of de Broglie's presentation is given in Bacchiagalupi et al. Also, in 1932 John von Neumann published a paper, that was widely and erroneously, as shown by Jeffrey Bubb believed to prove that all hidden variable theories are impossible. This sealed the fate of de Broglie's theory for the next two decades. In 1926, Erwin Madeling had developed a hydrodynamic version of Schrödinger's equation, which is incorrectly considered as a basis for the density current derivation of the de Broglie-Bohm theory. The Madeling equations, being quantum Euler equations fluid dynamics, differ philosophically from the de Broglie-Bohm mechanics and are the basis of the stochastic interpretation of quantum mechanics. Peter R. Holland has pointed out that, earlier in 1927, Einstein had actually submitted a preprint with a similar proposal but, not convinced, had withdrawn it before publication. According to Holland, failure to appreciate key points of the de Broglie-Bohm theory has led to confusion, the key point being that the trajectories of a many-body quantum system are correlated not because the particles exert a direct force on one another a la Coulomb, but because all are acted upon by an entity, mathematically described by the wave function or functions of it, that lies beyond them." This entity is the quantum potential. After publishing a popular textbook on quantum mechanics that adhered entirely to the Copenhagen orthodoxy, Bohm was persuaded by Einstein to take a critical look at von Neumann's theorem. The result was a suggested interpretation of the quantum theory in terms of hidden variables, I and II, Bohm 1952. It was an independent origination of the pilot wave theory, and extended it to incorporate a consistent theory of measurement, and to address a criticism of Pauli that de Broglie did not properly respond to. It is taken to be deterministic, though Bohm hinted in the original papers that there should be disturbances to this, in the way Brownian motion disturbs Newtonian mechanics. This stage is known as the de Broglie-Bohm theory in Bell's work Bell 1987, and is the basis for the quantum theory of motion Holland 1993. This stage applies to multiple particles, and is deterministic. The de Broglie-Bohm theory is an example of a hidden variables theory. Bohm originally hoped that hidden variables could provide a local, causal, objective description that would resolve or eliminate many of the paradoxes of quantum mechanics, such as Schrödinger's cat, the measurement problem and the collapse of the wavefunction. However, Bell's theorem complicates this hope, as it demonstrates that there can be no local hidden variable theory that is compatible with the predictions of quantum mechanics. The Bohmian interpretation is causal but not local. Bohm's paper was largely ignored or panned by other physicists. Albert Einstein, who had suggested that Bohm search for a realist alternative to the prevailing Copenhagen approach, did not consider Bohm's interpretation to be a satisfactory answer to the quantum nonlocality question, calling it too cheap, while Werner Heisenberg considered it a superfluous ideological superstructure. Wolfgang Pauli, who had been unconvinced by de Broglie in 1927, conceded to Bohm as follows, I just received your long letter of 20 November, and I also have studied more thoroughly the details of your paper. I do not see any longer the possibility of any logical contradiction as long as your results agree completely with those of the usual wave mechanics and as long as no means is given to measure the values of your hidden parameters both in the measuring apparatus and in the observed sick system. As far as the whole matter stands now, your extra wave mechanical predictions are still a check, which cannot be cached. He subsequently described Bohm's theory as artificial metaphysics. 
According to physicist Max Dresden, when Bohm's theory was presented at the Institute for Advanced Study in Princeton, many of the objections were ad hominem, focusing on Bohm's sympathy with communists as exemplified by his refusal to give testimony to the House Un American Activities Committee. In 1979, Chris Philippides, Chris Dudney, and Basil Hilly were the first to perform numeric computations on the basis of the quantum potential to deduce ensembles of particle trajectories. Their work renewed the interests of physicists in the Bohm interpretation of quantum physics. Eventually, John Bell began to defend the theory. In Speakable and Unspeakable in Quantum Mechanics, Bell 1987, several of the papers refer to hidden variables theories, which include Bohm's. The trajectories of the Bohm model that would result for particular experimental arrangements were termed surreal by some. Still in 2016, mathematical physicist Sheldon Goldstein said about Bohm's theory, there was a time when you couldn't even talk about it because it was heretical. It probably still is the kiss of death for a physics career to be actually working on Bohm, but maybe that's changing. <laughs> Bohmian mechanics Bohmian mechanics is the same theory, but with an emphasis on the notion of current flow, which is determined on the basis of the quantum equilibrium hypothesis that the probability follows the Born rule. The term, Bohmian mechanics, is also often used to include most of the further extensions past the spin-less version of Bohm. While de Broglie Bohm theory has Lagrangians and Hamilton Jacobi equations as a primary focus and backdrop, with the icon of the quantum potential, Bohmian mechanics considers the continuity equation as primary and has the guiding equation as its icon. They are mathematically equivalent insofar as the Hamilton Jacobi formulation applies, i.e., spin less particles. The papers of Durr et al. popularized the term. All of non-relativistic quantum mechanics can be fully accounted for in this theory. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Causal interpretation and ontological interpretation. Bohm developed his original ideas, calling them the causal interpretation. Later he felt that causal sounded too much like deterministic and preferred to call his theory the ontological interpretation. The main reference is the undivided universe. Bohm, Hilly, 1993. This stage covers work by Bohm and in collaboration with Jean-Pierre Vigier and Basil Hilly. Bohm is clear that this theory is non-deterministic. The work with Hilly includes a stochastic theory. As such, this theory is not, strictly speaking, a formulation of the de Broglie-Bohm theory. However, it deserves mention here because the term Bohm interpretation is ambiguous between this theory and the de Broglie-Bohm theory. An in-depth analysis of possible interpretations of Bohm's model of 1952 was given in 1996 by philosopher of science Arthur Fine. Hydrodynamic quantum analogues Pioneering experiments on hydrodynamical analogues of quantum mechanics beginning with the work of Cooter and Fort 2006 have shown that macroscopic classical pilot waves can exhibit characteristics previously thought to be restricted to the quantum realm. Hydrodynamic pilot wave analogues have been able to duplicate the double-slit experiment, tunneling, quantized orbits, and numerous other quantum phenomena which have led to a resurgence in interest in pilot wave theories. Kudder and Fort note in their 2006 paper that pilot waves are nonlinear dissipative systems sustained by external forces. A dissipative system is characterized by the spontaneous appearance of symmetry breaking anisotropy and the formation of complex, sometimes chaotic or emergent, dynamics where interacting fields can exhibit long-range correlations. Stochastic electrodynamics is an extension of the de Broglie-Bohm interpretation of quantum mechanics, with the electromagnetic zero-point field playing a central role as the guiding pilot wave. Modern approaches to SED consider wave and particle-like quantum effects as well-coordinated emergent systems that are the result of speculated sub-quantum interactions with the zero-point field. Experiments. Researchers performed the ESSW experiment. 
They found that the photon trajectories aren't surrealistic after all but more precisely, that the paths may seem surrealistic, but only if one fails to take into account the non-locality inherent in Bohm's theory. See also David Bohm Faraday wave Interpretation of quantum mechanics Madeling equations Local hidden variable theory Quantum mechanics Pilot wave Superfluid vacuum theory Fluid analogues in quantum mechanics Probability current Notes <laughs>